Hello, I'm Marissa Semkew in for Michael Corrin. Terrorism or mental illness? Last week, two of our soldiers in uniform were senselessly murdered in cold blood. Since then, there's been this debate growing about whether or not these men suffered from mental illness. And therefore, let's not call it terrorism because by focusing on terrorism, that obscures from the real problem of mental illness. It's not just the media refusing to f call last week's attacks acts of terror. It's our parliamentarians, too. Even the Liberal leader last week was decidedly cautious with his choice of words. I am deeply saddened by today's horrific events here in Ottawa and unreservedly condemn these brutal and heartless acts of violence. This attack is unforgivable. Should any other perpetrators or co-conspirators exist, they must be caught and be punished to the full force of our laws. Now, while there was still not much information known then, it was known that Martin Couture Rouleau and Michael Sahaf Bibo were both recent converts to Islam. Moreover, that they had intentions of traveling overseas. Now, as the hours progressed, we learned more about these two men. Specifically, Zahaf Bibo, the man who shot and killed Corporal Nathan Cirillo at the National War, War, War Memorial, attended a mosque in Burnaby, B.C. He, according to a spokesperson for the mosque, was kicked out after he'd objected to its policy of allowing non-Muslims to attend. Listen. We acknowledge the fact that the perpetrator of the attacks on Wednesday did attend this mosque. He had some objection to the frequent visits by non-Muslims. The mosque administration sat him down and explained to him that this is how they will run the mosque. They will keep their doors open to all Muslims and non-Muslims who wish to visit. He it was also discovered that Zahaf Bibo knew and attended the Burnaby Mosque with Hazibullah Yousafzai, you may remember, a Canadian currently at large facing charges for going to fight in Syria. So it's not as if there wasn't ample evidence showing that these attacks were terrorism. We learned that these two men were converts. They had desires to travel overseas. They'd engaged in radical conversations with other terrorists. And yet, when asked again on Friday whether or not these attacks constituted terrorism, Trudeau said this. I'm waiting for the appropriate authorities to uh, refer them as terrorists. Sure, but I mean, both these guys were traveling to Syria. Both of them were recent converts to Islam. In conversations they had with acquaintances, they were Islamist in nature. Are you really not prepared to accept that religion and ideology drove them as per the, you know, and therefore terrorism as per the definition in the criminal code? Well, uh, unlike some others are perhaps willing to, I'm not going to jump to conclusions about this. We have a process in this country. We have a rule of law. We have investigations underway. And I'm going to... Uh, defer to the experts and the authorities in this case and uh, as they make determinations uh, we will uh, we will be able to have real conclusions and not speculation so he's not willing to jump to conclusions and is waiting for the authorities to call it terrorism well yesterday night the rcmp provided an update on the attack in ottawa and for the first time formally referred to the incident as a quote terrorist attack the statement issued by rcmp commissioner bob paulson went on to read, the RCMP has identified persuasive evidence that Zahaf Bebo's attack was driven by ideological and political motives. Moreover, that he'd obtained a video recording prepared by Zahaf Bebo in which he reportedly praises Allah. Now here's Canada's criminal code definition of terrorism. It reads, terrorism is an act committed in whole or in part for a political, religious, or ideological purpose, objective, or cause with the intention of intimidating the public. Does that sound applicable at all? To suggest this isn't terrorism is absurd and also emblematic of a larger societal problem of a refusal to come to grips with the real threat we face. It's an unwillingness to accept that there actually are people out there who just want to kill us. I don't need an RCMP expert to tell me these attacks were terrorism, but hey, if that's what Trudeau needs, then that's what he got. I'll wait to see if only now is he willing to accept reality. If prevention poses challenges when we are aware of an individual, it is even more daunting to prevent the acts of someone unknown to us. We did not learn until after the attack that Zihat Bibo was hoping to leave for the Middle East. While we now have a video he made describing his ideological and political motives, our investigation is determining whether he had shared or communicated these intentions to commit violence to anyone. 
The Senate security hearings are happening today after the terrorist attack on Wednesday that resulted in the death of Corporal Nathan Cirillo and a shooting inside Canada's Parliament building. With such a clear act of terrorism, why are the opposition parties afraid to call a spade a spade? Ray Hurd joins me now in studio. Ray? Well, uh, basically, the commissioner of the RCMP, whom we've just seen, calls this guy, the shooter, in the Ottawa massacre, a terrorist. Mm -hmm. And that's what he is. Barack Obama called him a terrorist. Stephen Harper called him a terrorist. The media in Canada, except for Sun News, refuses to call them terrorists. And Justin Trudeau told you that he would not call them terrorists. And guess what? People sh should remember this. Justin Trudeau's father, when I was a young reporter, imposed martial law in Quebec. He locked up without trial or due process nearly 500 Canadians, and they were terrorists. So his father shut down the country after one person had been killed, and Justin obvious, obviously is oblivious of the history of his own province and his own country. That during the, the FLQ October crisis. crisis. Now, I think there's a big debate to be had about whether yeah. or not Canadians actually want to invoke the War Measures Act. But just going back, why mm. do you think these lines have been blurred between a terrorist and someone who is mentally ill. Okay, very simple answer. The media party in Canada decided until we just heard the commissioner of the RCMP saying that this guy was a terrorist and they're checking out mm -hmm. whom else he had contact with in Canada and abroad, and that will shock people when it comes out. Mm -hmm. So the real issue is the media party decided this is not a terrorist issue, it's a mental health issue. And guess what that means, Marissa? That's an insult to demonize mentally ill people. I do not use the term mentally ill normally. I say people with special needs. Often they were born that way. Mm -hmm. I emphasize with them and I love some of them. So I think that the media has been irresponsible, except for Sun, in saying this was a mental health problem. This shooter who did the Ottawa massacre was earning good money in the oil patch he had jobs. Yes, he was a drug, a drug addict, but basically he is a terrorist and we have to regard him as that. You also raised a very important point, which is a sad point. You said martial law. If this continues the way it's going on in Canada right now, and the Mounties are unable to track down some of these domestic enemies within, because that's what the what the terrorists are, mm -hmm. we may have to impose martial law in Canada you really the think same so? way we may have to do that the same way Pierre Trudeau imposed it after only one people was murdered, Trudeau acted, and when the CBC asked him about it, he said, you haven't seen anything yet. Well, before we go there, before we get to the point yeah. where we're imposing martial law, some have speculated about whether or not the RCMP should be broken up. You yes. know, it, to be sort of the equivalent yeah. of an FBI yeah. in Canada, your take. That is very important. The RCMP now is acting as a community police force in mainly Western Canadian provinces. It cannot do that job and at the same time do the best, of, best possible job in tracking down, monitoring terrorists. We are at war right now, even though Justin Trudeau doesn't think that. We are at war with ISIS, not only in Iraq and Syria. Syria, we are at war with them. Here in Ottawa, Canada, in Saint-Jean, Quebec, last week, Two episodes mm -hmm. in three days. So no one can deny the reality it is a war. Very quickly, I want to get this yeah. in. There's a Canadian journalist that's yes. now come out. I mean, the yeah. last 30 seconds I have yeah. left, a Canadian yeah. journalist that's come out and blamed yeah. Harper for this. And her name is Nelofer Pazira, P-A-Z-I-R-A. And guess what? She has an honorary degree from Carleton University. I call it Cartoon University. She has been acclaimed as a movie maker, and these are a few of the things she told the London Independent, a very reputable newspaper. She said Harper was responsible for the terrorism because he pushed Canada into the US-led war in the Middle East. Then she says she predicts that Muslim Canadians may drop their allegiance to Canada because Harper was supporting this war, and guess what she also did? 
when the Taliban was more powerful in Afghanistan, her home country, she went there apparently to, to show force with the Taliban terrorists. So she is, she is not my kind of Canadian, but I do respect her right to be a Canadian until she says something that causes death and destruction, and that is a possibility. Well, unfortunately, some people are just pure ignorant. Yes. Anyway, Ray. And that's all the pure hateful. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining Thank me. Thank you.